I will be a hacker. Welcome to the three episode series where I address programming for cybersecurity specific careers. This includes anything that has to do with IT security. Oftentimes, students are questioning whether they should even dabble or learn programming. I'm here to answer those questions, dividing these episodes into three part series. Episode one addresses whether you should learn programming for cybersecurity as an entry level worker. Episode two addresses the programming languages that you should use and utilize if you are going to program for cybersecurity specific professions. And video three is about the resources that you should use to learn programming. I hope you enjoy this three part episode series. Let's get started. Should you learn programming if you are going to pursue a career in IT security, information and system security, cybersecurity, anything of that nature, anything that has to do with IT security? Should you learn how to program? The dead honest answer is it depends. Now, I understand that is probably the worst answer I could possibly give you as a student trying to disseminate whether you should or shouldn't learn something. But let me go ahead and break this answer down. Let's first start with this. Cybersecurity and its positions in cybersecurity, for instance, penetration testing or being a security analyst or security director, security manager, or even a, a security consultant, it is totally going to depend on the level of programming knowledge that you have. It's going to totally depend on the positions that you fulfill. For example, if you just give a senior level management like a security manager, you're going to be doing less technical things and more managing things, more project management uh, and managing people, managing the network on that side. As a standard, I recommend all students in cybersecurity at least understand the fundamentals the foundations behind programming. As an entry level worker, you don't necessarily know where you're going to go. Maybe there is an undiscovered passion or interest in a specific position that you have yet to dabble with. And so that's where I go with at least understand the programming fundamentals, especially if you're going to be going into college or you are currently pursuing a college curriculum or degree, you will most likely have to take a computer science computer programming course throughout the curriculum. The proficiency of your programming knowledge and skills is going to depend on how far you advance into a certain position or career in cybersecurity. Let's get started with listing the specific types of jobs in cybersecurity which require a deep or at least a proficiency of programming knowledge. Here is the list that I have compiled as a student uh, who has explored the industry. Uh, don't take this as the 100% answer. The professions that require a good foundational understanding and even a proficiency in programming include penetration testing, security analyst, security software developer, secure software developer. We're going to go over the differences in a minute. Vulnerability assessor security code architect, security code auditor, and a security engineer. These are the professions that I have witnessed and seen and read about that need at least a good foundation and a good understanding of programming. Why do you need good knowledge and deep proficiency in these types of jobs? Well, let's break them down. For penetration testing, you're going to be developing scripts, automation tools, reading the code to perform tests on web-based application networks and computer systems, and you may have to develop your own uh, penetration testing tools uh, and, and tests. As an entry-level penetration tester uh, or a junior penetration tester, you may not have to create your own penetration testing tools. Rather, you may be using uh, the third-party programs. For security analyst, you're going to develop basic scripts, configure, implement, and maintain corporate security systems. 
perform vulnerability tests, risk analysis, and security assessments. Here's the difference between a security software developer and a secure software developer. I'm not sure if that's the official title, secure software developer, but a security software developer creates software designated for security specific purposes. So they're gonna be creating and di disseminating and dis dissecting virus, spyware, malware. They're gonna be creating detection systems, intrusion detection systems, and traffic analysis systems for secure the security operations side of uh, cybersecurity. Secure software developers, that's what I like to call them anyway, are software developers in the software development departments which ensure and embed the hardest, most patched, most hardened security you could possibly get in an application, or at least be review and have a security conscious in mind. So they're ensuring that security measures are embedded into systems through the use of the secure software development lifecycle and those lifecycles, following procedures, protocols, and measures to ensure that uh, a system and application is built from the security standpoint up. Vulnerability assessors. Develop scripts to scan and probe for vulnerabilities, weaknesses, and bugs in systems. Develop, test, and modify custom scripts and applications for vulnerability testing. So scripting is a big emphasis for vulnerability assessors. Scripting and automating certain vulnerability tests is going to be important. A security code auditor have the ability to read, analyze, and measure line-by-line -line source code to ensure the best possible security, conducts penetration tests with the use of automation scripts. So security code auditor is going to have to know how to script, but in addition, know how to read code, check code for certain security vulnerabilities and bugs, and sharpen and harden these weaknesses when identifying that there is a vulnerability in the source code. Security code architect, security code architect, a little bit different, um, yet they develop, review, and publish the overall security structure behind a system's code. So they're also one of these positions, employees, that's gonna make sure that an application is built from the security standpoint up. And finally, security engineer, is going to develop automation scripts to handle and track incidents, test security solutions through the use of scripts, and perform vulnerability tests. So scripting is a big emphasis for the security engineers. If any of the above careers and positions uh, that I outlined just, just a moment ago uh, are something that you want to pursue and that they, they have potential, then I would recommend that you definitely learn programming. The preceding question after this is, if you've decided to learn programming, when should you learn programming? Let's say you have started a learning path. You've enrolled in an online course and you're applying this for this online course, or you are in a college curriculum right now, or an IT certification and you're self-studying for this IT certification. When should you learn how to program? First off, let me preface this with, it's never a bad time to learn how to program. So you can learn how to program right now if you wanted to. What I will say is the longer that you wait, well, the harder it's going to get to learn. What I mean by that is not that it's gonna be harder for you to learn, maybe you even have an easier time learning it in a few years from now. But what matters is understanding the logic behind programming, something that's not emphasized in the software development community. If you look at these platforms like Udemy uh, or, or anything that has to do with like programming and learning coding, coding and learning how to code and, and things of this nature, they emphasize the language used. And there's nothing wrong with emphasizing that there's a good language to be learned, a good beginner language. But what isn't emphasized is understanding the logic behind programming. It's understanding the logic behind programming and computer science that's really gonna help you understand how to develop programs, how to successfully take a, an idea in your mind and actually put it into a program with code instead of reading the pure syntax of a code. In the next episode, episode two, I will be naming and providing the languages that you should learn in the best beginning or beginner language that I recommend students learn, the one that I have a fundamental knowledge of. Go to episode number two.